Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms and today I'd like to talk about something that's really very important and I find that a lot of people who start into this hobby slash business really end up undervaluing and that is their strain library. Uh, when I read Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms years ago, he talks about the importance of your strain library and that's always stuck with me. And I know a lot of commercial growers really focus on their strains and they get it dialed in. I think that it's just, it's really important. And a lot of people want to go buy $5 wedges or anything else um, that they can find online. And I think that's great for the hobbyist. But let me show you why, just why I think that it's so important to make sure that you, you got to excuse the shaky cam, I've injured my foot, I'm limping a little. But why it's so important to have good strains, why it's so important to have good strains in your library. Check that beastie out. 3.62 pounds on first flush yields. We'll get another uh, couple pounds uh, off our second flush. That's five pounds. That's that's 100% biological efficiency in two flushes. That's a blue strain that I have isolated um, or bred you could say. It's descended from Lambert's uh, 123 and it's just a phenomenal performer. And, and this is why it's so good to have good strains in your, it's, it's an arsenal, right? Um, our comb tooth, I weighed a comb tooth mushroom. Uh, I'll put some B-roll footage of it in here for you. Weighed 5.44 pounds first flush. That's off of our 12 pound blocks with only five pounds of solid materials in it. That's 100% that's biological efficiency on the comb tooth in the first flush. Um, that's one of our wild isolates that we found. It is just so phenomenally important to have good strains in your library. And I find that so many people, when they first get into this, either people either go really religious about it and go too far, or they go, you know what? Uh, I can buy the blue oyster mushroom wedge for five bucks. Why would I go buy one from uh, Paul Stamets or Lambert's or anyone else and pay the amount of money that they're asking for it. Well, the reason why is because your yields. You get better yields. Not only that, but this mushroom right here, it's so firm, it's so meaty. Look at that, when I pick it, I can throw that around all day long and it doesn't break, it doesn't crack. It's, oh, <laughs> it's got some flex to it. Like I can actually throw that in a box and it will take a beating. It's got a long shelf life. I've had chefs hold on to my mushrooms for almost two weeks and they don't go bad. Now, part of that's because of the freshness. They're not getting distributor mushrooms from me. They're getting mushrooms that were picked today or yesterday. So that gives them a long shelf life. But also, picking your strains for long shelf life, flavor and everything um, else that's associated with that will do you really well. It, it, it just, it pays off in the long run. You may have to pay up front for it, but free is never free. Um, cheap is never cheap. It always comes at a cost. And the question is, are you willing to pay the cost up front or do you want to keep paying the cost as you go along? And so that's why I highly suggest, you don't have to buy strains from me. There are plenty of good people who have strains. There are people who are breeding strains. Um, there are people who've got new varieties coming in, wild oyster types. But I highly suggest that when you do, don't shy away from a strain just cause it costs something. If you are making your own cultures or expanding spawn, the price is, is negligible for what you're going to get out of that strain. Uh, for instance, <clears throat> if you're buying a bag of spawn, let's say it costs you $32 to buy a bag of spawn like it would for me, you take that and then you expand it into four to eight bags. I mean, you can expand it into 10 or 20 bags. I've done it before. That immediately gives you a value increase that you've created. And now that, that $32 bag of spawn, I mean, that, go, that goes to nothing when it goes down into a, a per bag basis. And when you have a good strain, it pays dividends over and over again. If you clone it, it stays in your library forever. So with that, guys, I just wanted to make this a quick video because I was thinking about it while I was picking. But don't shy away from good strains. Free is never free. Cheap is never cheap. And remember, as always, guys, keep spawning culture.